This video contains story spoilers for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's Indigo Disc DLC. There won't be video footage of these story spoilers, but in case you don't want to be spoiled, there's an isolated section with timestamps beginning and ending of the spoilers so you can jump in and out if you wish. Timestamps can also be found in the description. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet introduced the terrestrialization mechanic where Pokemon can change into any of the 18 types, allowing them to get the 50% save type attack bonus for that type, and even granting an additional boost if they already are that type to begin with. And in the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero DLC, the Indigo Disc, a new 19th Terra type was added called Stellar. And Stellar, because it's not one of the original 18 types, acts very differently. So much so that it got me thinking, this isn't the first time that Pokemon has executed on this kind of concept before. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the times where Pokemon went beyond the type chart. Now, the first major instance of this concept that I want to talk about is the move Struggle. Struggle has existed since the very first games of Pokemon Red and Blue, and is a move that is used as a last resort when the Pokemon that's attacking has run out of power points for all of their moves, or under certain other circumstances, and has no other moves left to use. The drawback of having this move as a last resort means that the Pokemon using Struggle is going to take some form of recoil damage. However, in the first generation of Pokemon games, Struggle actually isn't typeless, and is in fact a normal type move, meaning it can't work on ghost type Pokemon and rock type Pokemon resist it. You may have seen this interaction before if you've watched certain videos from users like Scott's Thoughts or JRose11. They've shown this interaction off before on some of their solo challenges, but in Generation 2, Struggle would be changed to become the first major typeless attack that deals the same effectiveness to all Pokemon regardless of their typing. A basic typeless attack that's reliable damage against any enemy in the game. We'll come back to that thought later. For now, let's talk about some more examples, and a huge concept that was tried out before was Shadow Pokemon. Specifically, I want to talk about in the GameCube games, Pokemon Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness. You see, in these games, you don't really catch wild Pokemon. All of the Pokemon that you capture are going to be owned by other trainers using a special snag machine, but they can only capture these Shadow Pokemon. Shadow Pokemon have a whole slew of other mechanics in and of themselves, but what I want to talk about specifically are shadow moves. In Pokemon Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness, these Pokemon, when captured, don't usually have any of their normal attacks. Instead, they usually start with shadow moves. In Pokemon Coliseum, there's only one shadow move, Shadow Rush, but there's a selection of shadow moves in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness that gives a little bit of a wider array of options. And fun fact, in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, the shadow moves are actually categorized as special or physical based on the moves themselves, before Diamond and Pearl would make this a standard across the rest of the franchise. But what's interesting about these shadow moves is that they don't interact with the normal type chart. Now, the move Shadow Rush in Pokemon Coliseum simply just deals typeless damage across the board. It's basically a stronger version of Struggle, but Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness really expanded on this concept, with 18 different moves, many of them being damaging moves, and all of these are effectively typeless damage moves. But, interestingly, they deal super effective damage to any Pokémon that isn't a Shadow Pokémon and aren't very effective against other Shadow Pokémon. On top of this, Shadow Pokémon are very unique in that despite the fact that they can use these moves that don't have a type, they still retain their normal typing. Now, it's worth noting that Pokemon Coliseum and XD weren't actually made by Game Freak, but Genius Sonority, a development team that was created to make these games, and also made the Denpa Men. Now, this is a bit of a side tangent, but in Coliseum and XD, the Shadow Pokemon, they're not really permanent. Over the course of the game, the goal is to purify these Pokemon, so when they get fully purified, they'll actually lose all of their shadow moves. Any shadow moves they had will be overwritten with old regular moves, and shadow Pokemon will gain back all of the backlogged experience that they don't gain while they're still a shadow Pokemon. And speaking of Pokemon with temporary forms, that brings us to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and the Terrastal mechanic with the Stellar Terra type. In the last part of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's Indigo Disc DLC, the player will be able to go to a new location called the Area Zero Underdepths, alongside Kirin, Carmine, and Miss Briar, to encounter the legendary Pokemon Terrapagos that is the source of all of Terrastal energy. And after Kirin captures and then loses control over a newly Terrastalized Terrapagos, the player and eventually Kieran will team up to take it down. This allows the player to both capture Terrapagos and also access the new Stellar Terra type. Now, I said at the beginning of the video that the terrestrialization mechanic 
will change a Pokemon's type to one of the 18 types, and they'll gain a boost for moves of that type, an additional one if they already were that type to begin with. But Stellar Terra is different. When a Pokemon terrestrializes into the Stellar type, it gains boost to all of its attacks, with moves of the same type as its original typing gaining an additional boost on top of that, similar to if they had a terrestrialization for every Terra type at once. However, the Pokemon defensively stays the same typing, just like Shadow Pokemon. And in addition, there are two moves that the terrestrialization mechanic plays with in ways not unlike Shadow moves, and those moves are Terra Blast and Terra Star Storm. Terra Blast is a move that pretty much any Pokemon in the entire game in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet can learn, and is a move with 80 base power, 100 accuracy, and deals damage based on the user's attack or special attack, whichever's higher. This move is normally just a normal type move, but when a Pokemon terrestrializes, Terra Blast will change to the same type as that Pokemon's Terra type. And this includes the Stellar Terra type. And when Terra Blast becomes a Stellar type move, its effect changes to a 100 base power move that lowers the user's attack and special attack whenever it's used. Stellar type Terra Blast deals the same effectiveness against every other Pokemon in the game, except for Terra Pokemon. Other terrestrialized Pokemon take two times damage from a Stellar type Terra Blast. The other move, Terra Star Storm, is Terrapagos' signature move. You see, Terrapagos can't change its Terra type and is always going to be Terra Stellar. It even has a unique form that it turns into. Its Terra Star Storm is a base 120 power move that's normal type but changes to Stellar the same way that Terra Blast changes to Stellar when the Pokemon terrestrializes into the Stellar Terra type. And this move also changes its effect when it becomes Stellar type, allowing it to hit both enemies in double battles. The similarities are pretty interesting when you think about it. Shadow Pokemon keep their same typing, but have moves that are typeless against other Pokemon. Stellar Terra type doing the same thing with Terra Blast and Terra Star Storm changing to Stellar type and dealing the same effectiveness against every other Pokemon in the game, while the Pokemon that's terra into Stellar Terra has the same defensive typing that it used to have. And that brings me to the biggest point of comparison that I wanted to make with today's video. These three major situations that I've laid out all have something in common. They do something that most other RPGs do, and that is the concept of typeless damage, non-elemental damage. It's very common in other RPGs for there to be some sort of non-elemental based attacks as a consistent way of outputting damage. Final Fantasy has the very popular Ultima spell, and the Shin Megami Tensei and Persona games have the Almighty Element that falls mostly under this same umbrella. And there's a bunch of examples across many different games of the genre. In fact, Struggle is pretty similar, with recoil damage of course, to just basic physical attacks in almost every RPG ever. Now, Pokémon has to strike a delicate balance with this sort of thing because there is the ability to play against other people with this kind of gameplay formula, but it's still interesting that they've tried to incorporate certain facets of other RPGs into the experience, and sometimes it works out pretty well because you can play in a purely single-player campaign such as Pokémon Coliseum or XD, or it's balanced enough so that it's not really a threat to the competitive health of the game, in the case of Stellar Terra type. And while these are just three major examples, there's a lot of other smaller examples too that you could pull out across the Pokemon franchise. And there's even some stuff that dances the line, such as the Legend Plate in Pokemon Legends Arceus that changes Arceus' type proactively, and effectively giving Judgment its signature move the same effectiveness to every other Pokemon in the game. The move Burn Up, when used by pure fire type Pokemon, can turn those Pokémon typeless until they're removed from battle. There are so many different small and niche situations that might come up in the Pokémon games that are valid examples for this sort of topic. In the comments below, I want to know from you guys what are some examples that you can think of in the Pokémon games that I didn't mention here that have this sort of strange interaction that goes beyond the normal type chart. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much if you watched this far. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it and share it around. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And again, leave a comment if there's any examples you can think of for today's topic. And of course, have a great rest of your day and see you next video.